morning folks. Normally I say morning folks, but today I say hey folks, it's no longer morning. Um, I actually got a late start and it's, what time is it? 12.26 p.m. So I'm starting a fishing trip in the middle of the day. Uh, that's okay because in, in winter the water temperature is cold. Uh, it's, you know, it, there's no rush to get out here. I think a lot of times your best bite is going to be late in the day uh, after the sun and we've had we've got good sun has warmed up the water a good bit so I'm on the Shenandoah River and it took me about two hours to drive south here and uh, I, I took some time on, at the ramp before I even got out here to film a couple things related to rate of fall a jigs rate of fall i got a little finesse jig here this is what i filmed in the shallows this one's 16th ounce um is is something that a lot of anglers overlook and it's of critical importance uh because it it does a couple things for you one you snag last if if you have a slower rate of fall um two you're giving them more of a chance to take a look at it and actually see it coming down Three, once it's it's down there on the bottom, it actually looks more natural the lighter weight it is. So I'm zooming up to a winter hole that I found years ago, more than a decade ago. Um, it's nice to have the motor, the Torquedo Ultralight 1103 to run up through, even uh, riffles like what we have in front here. Um, w without this tool, uh, I, I certainly couldn't take as long getting out here and I would have to plan a float trip to hit the spot that I want to uh, but because you know because I have a three horsepower electric outboard I can zoom up through all these rapids get to where I want to that one spot that I want to fish today and uh, you know get on them this afternoon so before we get to this target destination uh, one thing I wanted to go over is the range of finesse jigs that I have at my disposal uh, as I alluded to earlier I, I very much prefer the lightest jig that I can get away with and I say get away with this one is a 16th ounce finesse jig uh, that I made with the with the do it mold um, if I need to, I can go all the way up to quarter. That quarter ouncer snags more, has a much less, um, you know, less natural movement on bottom because it just it sticks hard to bottom as opposed to just kind of fluttering along the bottom, um, which which does look natural. You know, the slower rate of fall with the 16th ounce makes it such that it looks like a crayfish. If you ever caught crayfish throwing them back in the water. What do they do? They kind of parachute their way down slowly. And, and that is a natural presentation. Um, but there are times where I need the heavier, the heavier jigs and I can step it up very slowly with what I have here. Um, the do it mold allowed me to, you know, to tie six different, six different weights. You know, I got a, the quarter ounce there. Then we go to 3 sixteenths, keep coming lighter, 5 32nd. I got a whole bunch of eighth. I'm pretty happy with the eighth. Um, 3 32nd, almost as light as it gets, and then 16th is as light as it gets. The reason that I would move from 16th to, um, to 3 32nd is if there was a little bit wind or a little bit more current. So the wind, and, and you know, with an increase in wind, you move from eighth, three sixteenth, and, and quarter. Um, what the wind does is makes it so you can't really feel the bite as well. And it puts puts a bow in the line. Um, same thing with current. If there's a lot of, whether you're tidal largemouth fishing where there's a tidal current going or on a river fishing for largemouth or smallmouth here in the Shenandoah, um, that current, and if they're near the current seam, will do the same thing where you're up here in your boat and your your line is coming down to the jig and if there's a straight line to it you're gonna feel the better the bite better than if if it has like a bow in it because of wind or, or current so 
I get away with as light a jig as I possibly can today, I have no wind. The river is low and clear. I'm starting with that 16th ounce because that's the most natural, least snaggy, um, slow rate of fall presentation that I can get away with. And I'm gonna start with that. All right, there's my first bite. And what do we got? Yeah, a little small mouth. So I pulled into a spot that um, is about 16 feet deep, which is rather deep for this, this little river. And uh, the 16, 16th ouncer got that one to. The trailer I'm using is this, this Z-Man Batwings. And I'm using the smaller one in muddier water especially if you if you have you know want a slower rate of fall you can jump from the smaller chunk trailer to the bigger one and that gives you a slower rate of fall any trailer or any thicker you know less sparse tied jig is going to slow your rate of fall but i like a sparsely tied jig obviously and you know going as light as possible is is the way that i prefer to slow the rate of fall but you can do it with that big chunk trailer. All right, small mouth are liking the 16th ounce black one. That one's a little bit bigger. Even though this was just a 16th ounce, I could feel him tap it. I could feel that fish just give a very well-defined singular We've had a nice warming trend here recently and our, our water temperature, uh, you know, 30, or I'm sorry, 43.8, 44 degree. Um, I'm pretty happy with that temperature, especially because it's, it's, uh, it's been much colder here recently and that upward trend in water temperature is a great thing. Yeah. Most of these fish, most of these smallmouth, have come near the top of the deepest water. And they've all hit it when it's been sitting still. Three minutes. That's, that's my new official recommendation of how to get these critters to eat. Let it sit at the bottom for at least three minutes. So I am going to come off of the, the 16th ounce black one uh, just because I feel like the casting distance I'm getting with the, the 16th ounce isn't as much as I'd like in this super clear water. One thing I do want to address, um, this is my rod for the lightest jigs that I have. It is, what, what is it rated? Um, it is a fast action medium light power seven foot six the the length of it helps me get a long cast out there and the fact that it's not medium but medium light and it allows me to get these these lighter weight jigs out there it's doing it i've caught a couple smallmouth but um i think in this clear water it's time to switch to a much more natural color and i'm going to jump up in weight uh, not a lot. I think I'm gonna jump up one, one rung on that to the, uh, let's see, I got 330 second. So a little bit heavier. And we're gonna go with instead of the black trailer, I got the, the green pumpkin there to match the green jig. That was a little bit better. Yeah, oh, that's a great fish. Really nice fish. Nice small mouth. Nice heavy, I'm gonna get the net out for you type of Shenandoah River. Small mouth, eating the finesse jig. You're beautiful. You like that black eighth ounce. Oh yeah, you whacked it. You whacked it. Chomp, 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 chomp. 
Hello, Chonky. Jumping up to the eighth ounce and making sure that it was sitting on the bottom with that black jig right on, I'm gonna say the current seam part of the deeper water and this is beautiful fish wax the eighth ounce finesse jig. I had passed the 3 16th through the same spot in green and uh, it didn't get bit because the current, the little bit of current that's out there kept this guy tumbling and uh, you know kept kept the jig tumbling through and he didn't hit it. I went back in with that little bit of current and again ratcheting up the weight for what you need to do with it makes a difference and the eighth ounce I'm sure this fish saw the the 332 that tumbled through there. I'm gonna take some pictures to get him back in. That's a cool fish. I'll let you breathe for a second. A couple otters in here. There sure indication there's some fish in the area. There are some fish eating critters. This is interesting. I'm in the center of this, this winter hole and it's 22 feet deep, right? Look at that water temperature. That water temperature, 42.6 is, you know, a degree, more than a degree colder than when I was out in the main river where the water was moving. And that says that the long-term history, the week ago weather was much colder than the two you know two or three days ago where we've had this warming trend um and, and that's something that these winter holes with this super still deep water provides is it's it's stable water temperature it doesn't go up or down really fast it doesn't give them that thermal shock you know that skinny shallow moving water is also going to cool down really fast as soon as we get back into the next cycle of colder weather. They like it stable um, in terms of, of the flow, less flow, but also the water temperature. And we're, we're actually fishing colder water in the winter hole than we were up in the shallows. So I may push to the shallower edges in the current side of this, uh, hoping that they found that warmer water and they're pulling up looking for something to eat. I may pull out of the center of this and work, you know, instead of right in the middle of the deepest part, I may get to the edges of it and fish shallow um, and hopefully find some fish that are, that are actively looking to eat in that little bit warmer water. Can I let you in on a secret? That 90% of you watching this video won't do, but it's the critical part of getting bit do whatever you need to do to have that finesse jig sit the head of it sit in one spot for at least three minutes now, you can go into that with great intention saying yeah i can do that set a timer sure like even right now i've put it somewhere and i think i thought it was sitting but the the super gentle current or just a little bit of drift in this direction is keeping me from really letting it sit still. And, you know, if I had any wind at all, it would be even harder with that lighted jig. But that's critical. 
That's a good small mouth. Right back up at the top, another very nice small mouth on the line. I'm going to get the net under this guy. He's bigger than the other one. Beautiful. Very predictable spot right up at the top. Mm. Yep. You are a chunky fish. I think that's the biggest Shenandoah smallmouth that I've caught in quite some time. Beautiful. My biggest Shenandoah smallmouth in a number of years. It was uh, 18 and 3 quarters and 3 pound, 14 ounce. Hitting that uh, 8 ounce black finesse jig. We're going to let her go and say thank you. Oh, you smell so good. Yeah. So I remember fishing this particular winter hole. I, I don't know, has it been 15, 16, 17, 18 years? It's been a long time since I've been here in the cold water period. Actually, Last time I was here was then. Um, and the river was up. And this area of foam here was the only place we caught fish that particular day was here. Um, 22 foot deep water at low flow is a really nice refuge when it's, when it's high. And um, you know, it, it, we caught a lot of largemouth in particular right up along that bank. In, I'm going to tell you, add five or six feet to what we've got now. That was the day. And, and we caught them all in one little pocket um, on jigs, on black jigs. Anyhow, as you're moving around, it's in, in checking out, you know, what are some of the places, the other places that you find them as it lowers, the river lowers, they spread out more. As it rises, they pull to that, that bank up there. All right. It's uh getting later later in the afternoon I'm gonna take the, the craw jig off and I'm gonna go in with a different presentation these fish have not seen today uh, this is I'm gonna turn around so you can see it in the Sun but the scented jerk shads I forget what the weight is but it's one of the lighter ones it's not the lightest but whatever it's a bait fish profile instead of a craw so I'm going to tie that on there, throw it in the same spot that I've been catching the other ones. Maybe giving them a different look is uh, something that will pay off here. Well, we got at least one of them that likes the, the minnow profile. Not a bad fish. Probably not worthy of the net, but not a bad fish. <laughs> huh. I was wondering when you were going to come out and play. I knew I saw you down there. <laughs> yeah, I can see those white tips. I knew if I switched over to the minnow, I'd get that walleye to eat. There's a bunch of them down there. All right, that was a fun afternoon out here on the Shenandoah River. Um, sun is about to be down. I will say that without that motor back there, I don't get to do what I did today. Um, you know, normally you got to do a float trip. 
you got to go, you know, you got to set it up with someone to go from point A to point B. Or if you paddle or pedal upstream, I don't know how much, how much of that can you do getting upstream. I've certainly done that in the past. I've done a good bit of that. Uh, but there's limitations on that, and the limitations with a 915 watt hour lithium battery and a three horsepower electric outboard in our super shallow drafting uh, inflatable kayak, there's not much I can't do, um, including get out here, you know, just for what ended up being a, about a five hour trip on the Shenandoah catching about 10 fish. So, enjoyed it. See ya.